God bless you. I'm Pastor Kevin Richardson. I'd like to welcome you to the Cross TV Showcase. I have the distinct privilege of introducing you to Pastor Saheed. He is the pastor of Rejoice Ministries International. And I am going to introduce you to him through an individual who has a deep relationship growing with him, Pastor Shelton Bailey. Go ahead and just tell us a little bit about him. Uh, greetings and praise God. Well, thank you for the opportunity to introduce Pastor Enrique to the international audience. I've known Pastor Enrique only a short time, but in that short time I've come to recognize that he is indeed a true man of God and he's on a mission to change the circumstances in Pakistan, particularly for the Christians, as well as to lead as many people there to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. He's a man of God, he's a husband, he's a father, and I just want to introduce him to you as Pastor Enrique today. God bless. Uh, God bless you. Uh, as my friends has said about me, so I'm Pastor Sajid Enrique from Pakistan, Actually, I'm from Northeast Punjab. I'm from Sialkot, and uh, I'm running this ministry, uh, which is called Rejoice Ministries International. God has called us to uh, do a lot in Pakistan, and, uh, and God is also using me as an international, you know, preacher. I'm going from country to country, preaching His name in streets and proclaiming His name, and that's my uh, that, that's my goal. To, to do until uh, I have last breath of my life to preach the name of Jesus. Now, your ministry has a particular focus on something that is occurring within the Christian community. And what we're dealing with is the subject matter of slavery. Well, if we, if we go in Pakistan and we, 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 we have a look upon all these slaves, Christian slaves, actually I would call them they are Christian slaves in Pakistan because they are illiterate people and from generation to generation they have not seen a phase a, a gate of the school they never entered because uh, from generation to generation this heavy debt is upon their shoulders and uh, this is how uh, they, are, uh, they, are, they are in heavy debts and I have, I have visited these places and whenever me and my team goes to visit and to feed them in fact, Pastor, we literally cry when we see li these little children are working heavy labor. So it's kind of heart touching for us. And we really want to set all these Christian slaves free. So what you're engaged in is doing what Jesus said that he came to do, to set at liberty those who are bruised and to set captives free. Now, we have a video that we're going to show you now that gives you a distinct insight of what is occurring there. Free at least one Christian slave family in your life. Many Pakistani Christians who have been legally bonded to their break kiln jobs. Through your generosity, the debts which these desperately poor families incur in time of special hardships will be paid. Setting them free, transforming their lives, and giving them hope for the future and many such are still needed to be set free as it's written in book of isaiah chapter 61 in verse 1 the spirit of the sovereign lord is on me because the lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners the daily away at 2 a.m till 2 p.m they are working day at night in scorching of the sun they work. The area of their work has no shade. Now this family is in such a pain. It's quite painful to see their real situation. Kids can't go to school because they all are bound to work together. Mostly the men when they're 10 years old since they start taking little loan which ends up to four thousand US dollar and now they are no more free. They are slave and they are Christian slave and can't pay their debt back. Why? Because 
their daily wages is so low and they don't have an extra money to pay their debt back. In fact, brick kilns which are located on the outskirts of most major cities and towns in Pakistan operate almost exclusively on the basis of debt bondage. All families receive advance payments which bond them and their entire families to owners of brick kilns. Once bounded, the laborers are forced to live and work at the brick kiln site. While all members of the families are expected to work, the minimal wages paid are given only to the male head of the family. The pay structure is such that basic necessities are not covered by the wages, forcing workers to take out further loans and increase their debt. If you want to be partner with Rejoice Ministries to set these slaves free, our email is being shown on the screen. Please keep on praying for the Christian slaves in Pakistan. Now, what is interesting, Pastor Saji, is that the children of Israel, when they were in bondage in Egypt for 400 years, at one point they were forced to make bricks without straw. And God sent Moses as a deliverer for those people. And what we're seeing here in this video we just viewed is hopelessness, despair, which leads to suicide, which leads to a lack of education, which perpetuates ignorance. And not only that, which puts individuals in a situation where they even become psychologically harmed, suicidal, or even get to the point where they view themselves as captors and they become submissive to the manifestation of evil that has been wrought upon them. Pastor Bailey, you have had some understanding of this as an American in your association with Pastor Saji. What is your perspective on the circumstance? Well, my understanding of the situation from having been invited to Pakistan on three different occasions to do ministry there is that the Christians there are a target of persecution. It doesn't take very much for a Muslim to accuse them of, falsely accuse them of anything, for them to be subjected to unfair arrests and trials, persecution, and even death in some instances. And there is most certainly a need for prayer for the Christians there in Pakistan, as well as other uh, Christians in persecuted places. But my experience, Pastor, is that there's definitely a persecution that's going there. The Christians are targeted there, and they this ministry, Rejoice Ministry, is in need of support so that they can, can carry on and do the work of the Lord in help in freeing the people who are enslaved there and those who are being persecuted as well. So, Pastor Saji, one of the things that you're doing is that you are not just freeing them from this oppression, but you're empowering them through employment. Tell our viewers about the things that you are doing in that regard. Well, the, the project is not only to set them free and leave them alone, no. So once we set one family free from the debt, we buy a taxi for a man so he can ride that taxi on daily basis and and uh, make money for the family. And then we pay 12 months rent by, uh, by our ministry. So in those 12 months that we are paying each month the rent, this family can stand on their feet. And then the children that are just there, we take in our school, uh, we are going to watch this uh, shortly uh, video. So we take those children in our school and this, these children are being being educated in our school. They don't have to be worried about the month, uh, monthly fee. They don't have to be worried about the, the uniform, the books, that all will be, will be taken care of by the Rejoice Ministries International. So this is our hope and this is how we are doing. But for future, we want to have a land. We want to build small rooms, uh, houses for each family for 12 months. So, they, so they, they don't have to be worried about the house, but for 12 months, not for permanent. That is only for one year taking care, care of them. And we want in, in the same place, in the same land, school be built, you know, in, in that. So children can go to school and then a church as well and then a small dispensary for the medical care. So... The beauty of what you're saying is that you are going to create a community that will be transitional so that 
they will be able to get out of the debt circumstance that is overwhelming and that they will also be able to be educated so that this will be something that will be progressive within their family structure. And not only that, you're going to allow them to have a means whereby they can be self-employed. There's a video that we're going to show you right now in regards to this. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a manager. I am a businessman. I'm a genius scientist. When I grow up, I'll be a doctor. I want to be a pilot. I am a doctor. I am a singer. I am a sportsman. Rejoice the School of Education believes that a better future lies where children can learn themselves. At Rejoice, academic subjects and extracurricular activities complement each other to develop socially skilled and healthier students. Theories and concepts are well understood by scientifically experiments and their own. At Rejoice, we encourage the students to think independently and develop their own dreams. Rejoice the School of Education, building dreams. Amen. Now, viewing that video allows our viewing audience to understand the circumstances that have transpired. These two videos are telling us that we as believers have a divine responsibility. The Bible says we're to take care of those who are imprisoned and that we're to take care of widows and we're to take care of orphans and we're to feed the hungry. And this encompasses that divine call upon us as believers. How Christians are distinguished throughout history is by the way they treat those who are poor. Jesus says, the poor ye shall have with you always. But the Bible tells us that we who are believers are called literally to express compassion, not simply in salvation, but in a means that will allow them to have an abundant life. Pastor Saji, how do you view those who are imprisoning individuals in this manner? How should we interact with them? What should we be doing in regards to those who are the oppressors and enslavers? Well, through your TV channel, I really want to encourage the viewers to help, you know, these slaves. I've seen a lot of people in America and in other places, those who are really wealthy, but I've also seen people with frozen hearted. And I really want to encourage all of you that, you know, be a part of it. Let's sleep a real peaceful life when we sleep. I believe when we help others, we have a beautiful sleep. Because I'm, I, I, I've gone through, I know the real sleep mean. What is the real sleep mean? So once we are setting free some family and we are putting the children in school, uh, we are taking care of them. I know it's going to give you real, you know, real peace in your heart. Uh, if we see a life of Jesus, he's been doing all, uh, all of his life, uh, all these miracles where he sees a need of bread, physical bread. He's providing physical bread, physical fish, not in, in, in small amount, in abundance. So our God is giving, when he gives, he gives in abundance. So why don't we think all about all, of, all these miracles, that what, how, how we have to deal with our finances. And if we have money in abundance, we should help the poor. We should help uh, them, set them free and build a, build, and build a school for uh, such children. So I would always encourage people to give for uh, you know, such poor families. Tell our viewing audience how they can give. Well, there is a way in paypal.me slash give to rejoice. That is a paypal, I repeat, 
paypal.me slash give to rejoice and then they, I'm leaving also the number that can help viewers it's 909-775-2877 I repeat 909-775-2877 and then there is a whatsapp number uh, you know at that's an international but it is active on whatsapp it is it start with double zero nine two three zero zero seven one two eight three seven seven i repeat again it's a whatsapp number and it start with double zero nine two three zero zero seven one two eight three seven seven and you can help through uh, give to rejoice on paypal that will be easiest and a fastest way and then you can email and email is given on video as well and then there are numbers and I hope the, uh, this information would work. Pastor Saji, tell us one particular story that is really extraordinary in what you have done to set one particular family free. Well, I, I, as I told that once, uh, uh, once in last year in 2018 when we set one family free, you know, uh, there was a real joy in our faces and we were so rejoicing as our ministry name is also Rejoice Ministers International. And when we saw the real tears on the faces of those family when they were free, that what is the joy to be free? At least you can go to church, you can go to school, you can live free life having, you know, free, uh, having freedom. And uh, we were so much encouraged, we were so much excited to do that. That's why we are encouraged to set many families free this year in 2019. You know, so there's such a beautiful joy on the faces, on the heart, once we do it. You know, the Bible says that he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. And Pastor Shelton Bailey, what, as an African American, are you experiencing as you identify with this given our history as slaves? Well, we recognize how the far-reaching effect that slavery can have on people. Of course, we didn't live during the generation where slavery was being imposed upon us as African-American people, but yet we are still feeling the effect of it. And it's important that, as Christians, that we come together now and that we intervene in this situation and we support the work of Pastor Enrique and others like him so that those Christians in Pakistan won't have to experience the far-reaching of cons consequences of slavery in the way that we as African Americans have experienced here in America. So the curse of generational bondage that is passed down because of slavery is something that is broken through what Pastor Saji is doing. Pastor Saji, would you just pray right now in regards to this issue that we have brought to the forefront today? Sure. Let's pray. Father, we come into your presence and we glorify your beautiful name. And I thank God for this beautiful TV network, the, the Cross TV here in L.A. Father, we give glory to your name. And Father, we bring all these prayer requests as been, we've been talking about slavery, Christian slavery in Pakistan. Father, we pray that you may bless the viewers as they are watching these videos. And Father, open the hearts of them so they can help to set these Christian slaves free in Pakistan. Father, bless them in abundance and open their hearts. And let there be faith that if they are going to spend, if they are going to, to give to God, it will return in hundredfolds. So, Father, bless them and bless this TV network and bless Pastor Kevin Richardson, bless Pastor uh, Kay Sheldon Bailey as we all are together today morning here. So, bless each one of us and bless the audience and the viewers. Father, we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Pastor Shelton, could you pray for those who are putting these individuals in bondage? Indeed. 
Indeed, the, the word of God encourages us, Pastor, as you know, to pray for our enemies and those who despitefully use us. And certainly, uh, we want to be in prayer for them. So, Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, O Lord, and we thank you for the privilege and the honor of coming boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Your word says that if we ask anything according to your will, you will hear us. And if we know that you hear us, we shall have a petition that we desire of you. And so, Father, we just come lifting up those who are enemies to your people. We know that you are not willing and that even they should perish, but that they would come to repentance. And we pray, Father God, that you would touch their hearts. We know that the heart of the king is in your hand, and you can turn it whichever way you will. You can turn the hearts of men and women whichever way you desire, Father God. So we lift up those who are persecuting, those who are enslaving the Christians there in Pakistan, and we ask, Lord, that you would touch their hearts, Father God, and that you would turn their hearts, Lord God, from wickedness to righteousness, Lord God, and that your goodness viewed in other Christians there will lead them to salvation, O oh God. Touch and bless, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It does not take large sums of money in Pakistan to do what God has called Pastor Sajid to do. It does not take hundreds of millions of dollars. If you donate any amount, it will grow exponentially because God tells us in his word that he can do exceedingly and abundantly and above all we can begin to ask or even imagine. So do not feel that whatever Holy Spirit is asking you to sow into the work is insignificant because God is able to multiply it just as he did with the loaves and fishes. Amen. Pastor Shaji, what do you understand in regards to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ that is central to your call and what you're doing in the freeing of slaves? Well, Paul says that if Christ is not risen, our preaching is worthless. I mean, there's, no, there's nothing. So as Jesus is risen, so I... And my ministry goal is to, you know, reach the world with this beautiful meaning and with this beautiful message of the risen Christ and to set the slave free and, uh, you know, to teach them the, the, the true meaning of risen Christ. I still remember uh, once I asked the meaning of uh, Easter to the slave family and they don't know. They, they say, yes, it is kind of a celebration. But what, what does it mean to celebrate? So we are truly celebrating a uh, risen Christ that lives in us. And this is, this is what I want to impart in those, you know, families that, that are going to slavery. You know, it's interesting that Jesus was literally sold for 30 pieces of silver. Mm -hmm. And that is the price of a slave. And his suffering on the cross was of such a nature that he himself subject himself to bondage. Pastor Bailey, in our closing moments, would you just tell those who are viewing us how they could come to know the freedom that we have experienced in Jesus Christ? Indeed, Pastor. You know, I've said for a long time that the most important decision that a person can make in their life isn't where they're going to live, it's not who they're going to marry, it's not whether or not they're going to have children or how many children they're going to have, it's not where they're going to live or where they're going to send their children to school. The most important decision that a person can make is to receive Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. That's the only decision that we can make on earth that will have eternal consequences, that would ensure us a place in heaven for eternity. So if you have not made that decision on today, I want to invite you to pray with me and make that decision. All you have to do is simply bow your heads with me and repeat after me as I pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you today confessing and believing that your son Jesus Christ died on a cross for my sins and rose again on the third day. I believe him as the only Savior and Lord of the world, and I receive him now into my heart. Forgive me, Father, of all of my sins. I repent from my sins. I turn away and I vow this day to live my life for you, serving you to your glory. 
thank you, Father, for salvation. Thank you for the free gift of salvation. I receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Slavery has many facets to it, unfortunately. We understand that one of the issues that exists today in the world is sexual slavery, human trafficking. And not only are we dealing with that, but we're dealing with a form of indentured servitude that Pastor Saji has just exposed. And I just want to say to those of you who are in any form of bondage, any form of slavery, that your despair, your anguish, your fear, your hopelessness, your sense of destitution is something that Jesus Christ has experienced himself. Amen. Because he bore our sins on the cross. Amen. And we do not have a high priest in Jesus who has not been affected in the same manner Amen. that we have. Jesus was God and man, and he experienced these things himself at every level of humanity. Amen. So he is sensitive to your needs. And so we're just praying right now in the name of Jesus of Nazareth that every spirit that has come to kill, steal, and destroy will be broken in your life and that you will experience the freedom that my brother has just offered to you. And we pray for the children, Lord, who are in bondage as well, whose minds are being manipulated, controlled in a manner that will cause them to not see themselves as having a future and a hope. Your word declares that you came so that we would have a full and abundant life. And we release to them by faith today an abundant life. And we would like to thank you, our viewers, for allowing us to speak to you today. And we bless you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.